Welcome back to Joel Explores Tech. Today I'm going to look at my Mac LC550. It is a uh, empty shell case uh, that I picked up a number of years back. It's just missing the hard drive and motherboard. The 500 series, uh, especially the 575, is fairly sought after for what's known as the Mystic Mod. Uh, people will take the 575 motherboards out and use them in the Color Classic as an upgrade board. Uh, the Color Classic is 16 megahertz and the LC575 is running at 33. I recently came across a loose 575 motherboard. So I'm gonna do what I'm gonna call here the uh, D-Mystic mod, uh, taking that uh, LC575 motherboard, installing it in the uh, case for the 550. Uh, as far as I've been able to uh, determine and looking online, uh, the 550 and the 575 uh, case would be exactly the same uh, with the only difference being that motherboard. So let's get everything on the bench and start exploring. As far as the internal parts, we have the LC575 motherboard here. It has the uh, edge connector here that is used when it slots into the machine. We have uh, one slot for RAM, two slots for the VRAM. We have the uh, LC68040. It's the LC version, uh, meaning it is uh, the lower cost variant uh, that doesn't have an FPU installed. We have a PDS slot um, that you can use for uh, video cards or uh, Ethernet, other different expansions. Um, and this one here is referred to as the COM slot, commonly used for modems or uh, Ethernet cards there as well. Along the back, we've got our standard connectors, the ADB, some serial ports, the uh, external SCSI, and then I believe these are the audio in and a uh, microphone. The board itself is in pretty good shape. Uh, I didn't even have to do much cleaning, uh, so it looks pretty good. Uh, it doesn't have a battery installed at the moment, uh, but we should be able to test it without that battery. Uh, this is sort of a uh, Velcro surface where the battery could attach other parts I was going to use in the build. Um, I have a 32 meg SIM. I believe this one is EDO, but I think it will work in, in this machine. So 72 pin SIM. Uh, that would bring us up to a total of 36 if that works. I have a Ethernet card for that PDS slot. So I'm just bringing the motherboard back into view here. This would attach with the connector down facing like this and just inserts into the machine as one piece. And then I also have a modem card uh, just to show I'm not going to install it because uh, obviously modems are not that useful these days. Uh, but it is interesting to see a card that would actually go into that uh, that comp slot. Uh, so in this vertical position and then on the back of the machine you would get something like the, uh, the modem vertically next to the, the Ethernet port like this. So the machine itself is quite a beast. They're quite heavy. You can see this is the Performa 550 uh, as badged. But I think the case itself, uh, all the components outside of the motherboard would have been the same between the 550 and the 575. It's got the CD-ROM and floppy. We've got button controls for brightness and volume. Uh, looks like a microphone, or no, headphone jack on the front of the machine. Uh, power light here, uh, microphone up top. And it's got a nice uh, large Trinitron screen. So here is the back of the machine. Uh, we can see we've got our standard three pin power connector. There is some controls for uh, horizontal and vertical position. Uh, some sort of lock mechanism here. Um, I don't have the screws for the case, but luckily I do have the uh, back cover here. And it clips in. Of course, with these plastics being so brittle, you have to be very careful. And there we have it. With the uh, metal shielding on the inside. You can see that uh, modem that would have gone vertically has a pop-out cover. And I do have the cover as well uh, taped in here for that ethernet that I'm gonna be installing. 
So before we actually uh, slide them on the board in, uh, let's go ahead and swap out the RAM and get our larger stick installed. Luckily this has the uh, nicer metal clips. Some of these older sim sockets can be quite fragile if they have the plastic clips. We'll have to confirm, but I think this has the uh, larger VRAM installed. And then the other thing before we slide it in, let's go ahead and install our Ethernet card. So there's actually two segments to this uh, PDS connector. This is only using that front segment. Uh, if anybody knows a little bit more about these sockets and what the full uh, extent would be used for, go ahead and leave it in the comments. I'm assuming it's probably for video cards or other kind of higher bandwidth applications. I've never, um, back in the day, just for some background, I was more of a, uh, a PC person. I uh, used a lot of these machines in school. Uh, but didn't have a chance to uh, get more familiar with them, you know, upgrading and, and working on the machines the way I did with uh, PCs back in the day. So I'm still sort of learning as I go with these machines. And then the board just sort of clips in. You can feel it seat and then uh, you'll see that it's flush with the back. And then up here there is a slot uh, where a sled for a hard drive can be installed. Um, I do have a drive, uh, one gig uh, that is installed on the sled currently. Uh, I'm not going to actually install it because these are very brittle. Um, this one here isn't broken, but uh, I don't want to risk it. And I'm going to be using a blue SCSI on the external SCSI uh, connector here for testing. So um, actually even to save some wear on this back cover, I'm just going to leave this off. Uh, we'll hook up some power and let's give it a try. All right, so I've got the machine all hooked up uh, with the power hooked up. We've got our keyboard and mouse hooked up via the ADB connector. And then we have the blue SCSI on the back. Uh, I've got a SD card with a drive image for OS 7.1, uh, which would have been the uh, correct era for this machine. So I think we're ready to uh, flip on the power. It's good, we heard a bong from the monitor there, not the OS, but the, uh, the actual uh, CRT powering up. And then we're good, at least so far. Let's see if we get an image. I heard a little static on the screen. Yes, it's working. And obviously we get that uh, clock notification because the battery is not installed. So I noticed I was getting some uh, flickering on the camera and uh, unfortunately still am. Uh, I've tuned it in about as good as I can get uh, with the uh, iPhone camera I'm using. Um, so hopefully this won't be too bad. Um, and we can just kind of take a look at the machine here a little bit. So again, we've got OS 7.1 uh, that was installed. Uh, we can see that it's detected as a uh, LC575. Again, most of my experience is on the PC side, so I'm not familiar with a lot of these older Mac utilities. I started using Macs in the early 2000s, uh, right around the time the iPod came out, at least as a, a home machine. Okay, so we can see it's showing no FPU. We've got the 68040. I'll go ahead and run this and then we'll jump to the results. Okay, looks like our tests are done. So they've got a Quadra 605 showing as a 1.0. 
our average result was uh, 1.3. I'm not super familiar with uh, how performant the, the Quadra was, uh, even mapping these over to say a, a PC at the time. Um, I believe this would have been you know, around the, the 486 era uh, on the PC side. Um, but let me see if I can find uh, a game or two and uh, we'll fire those up and see how they run. One thing I did want to try was to see if I could figure out uh, the networking. We might be uh, blocked by my lack of Mac knowledge here. Let's go ahead and try launching a uh, Telnet application. And I will plug in a Ethernet cord. Let's give it a try. I assume it's not just going to work as is. Nope, no Mac TCP driver. Okay, so. Let me do a little bit of research and figure out how we need to, uh, what we need to do to install the Mac TCP. Uh, hopefully it will be on this uh, pack of stuff I've got and then uh, hopefully that can get us going. So it's about a week later after I did the initial test of the machine. I bumped into some issues trying to get the networking set up on uh, 7.1. Uh, so I went ahead and updated to 7.6.1. Um, I think it gives some uh, nice upgrades. Um, and from what I've seen, I think the machine runs pretty good with that as well. Um, just to talk through some of the differences uh, in setup uh, between the two, before I was having to try to mess with, uh, I think, Mac TCP. Uh, again, I'm not super familiar with these uh, this era of machine as I only use them in school. Uh, so I'm still kind of getting used to some of the uh, details. Uh, but once I upgraded to 761, um, I was able to go into the TCP IP. Um, and I actually just did a manual IP. I initially tried uh, DHCP, um, but was hitting some troubles there. Uh, but once I set up a manual IP address, um, just the, the subnet mask and a router and name server, uh, everything seems to be working great with that uh, network card we installed. Just to show that is working, let's go into a test utility that I was using. This was sort of the uh, the first quick test I was doing uh, to ensure things were working. Uh, so we can see we've got Google here, we can run a ping, and we see a sent and received on our ping signal. Uh, I was also seeing the uh, light on the back of the network card uh, pinging, uh, telling me that it was actually sending a signal. So that all looks good. And then let's go ahead and see if we can connect up to the internet. I went ahead and installed uh, IE4. And then let's go ahead and Go to a site that is uh, specifically set up for retro systems by the creator of the Action Retro YouTube channel. Uh, you can search for things on this site. I think most of you watching my channel have probably seen his videos, um, but it lets you, uh, you know, bring up uh, simplified versions of the web uh, on this old machine. So pretty cool, kind of going back. Um, again, I remember my early web days were more on the, uh, you know, sort of, um, uh, was it Trumpet Windsock on the uh, Windows machines, uh, running early versions of Netscape and uh, Mosaic. Uh, getting onto the web and uh, you know being amazed every time you found there was a new new website out there uh, was was pretty cool back in the day. And then I thought I would run the uh, 
same benchmark that we ran on the previous version of the OS. So we will run Speedmark again. So speedometer, sorry. Let's go ahead and run that. And we'll run the same test suite that we ran on the OS 7 install, 7.1. Okay, uh, as we can see in the results here, uh, I'll put these up side by side with the previous one, uh, but I think we're pretty much in the same ballpark, uh, if not even faster. Uh, so I don't see any reason not to run uh, 7.6 on this machine. Uh, unless there's something else, uh, you know, maybe outside of my knowledge area here that would be slowing down applications. So I went ahead and installed SimCity 2000, one of my favorite games uh, from the PC side. But we'll see how it runs here on the LC575. So I feel like we're getting reasonable speed here. Of course, this game starts to uh, lag a bit as you get more more going on in your city. Uh, let's just do a kind of a quick build here. This is a suboptimal layout, but uh, we'll just get something going so we can kind of see it start to build out here. we require water for people to move in. moving in because of the uh, coal, plow coal power plant is so close to the uh, residential. I generally don't build it that close. But yeah, you can see it's working. Um, oh, there we go. Now we're getting some people moving in. Uh, so I think that was uh, a quick look at this um, demystified Mac Performa 550 with the 575 board installed. I hope you enjoyed watching and I'll see you next time.